what's up everybody really quick break in the regular podcasting we got pure 2k right now from the sfl league is that what it's called sfl league or am i saying Simulation the league? League. <laughs> also known as the sfl the sfl uh he he's been doing this for how long now i have been a part of this league for two years two years and actually this weekend oh which is what yesterday <laughs> but anyways look he's here to talk about his league i'm gonna let him i'm gonna go ahead and let him go go <laughs> all right so my name is pure 2k12 in this the sfl i'm known as marcus dunhill the quarterback of the atlanta swarm and the SFL essentially is the first controllerless esports league in the world. The league consists of 340 real people who comprise the 20 teams that we have in the league. Every week, the coaches and owners make playbooks to counter the game plan of the opposing teams. These playbooks are entered into All Pro Football 2K8, and the video game runs a CPU versus CPU simulation for the results for their hard work to play off in real time on YouTube, Twitch, and TV. Mm-hmm. Every week, players in the league progress and improve the attributes of their player. The regular season consists of 12 weeks, which is followed by the playoffs. After the 12 team playoffs conclude with the championship, we hit the offseason, which includes player resigning, free agency, and most important, the rookie draft where new players get to join the league. This offseason, we are debuting an eight team minor league for the season that runs during the offseason for rookies to participate in. My team and I were fortunate enough that we went 10-2 and two in the regular season and we ended up being the number one seed in the playoff. We ended up getting to play on Sunday, April 19th against Vancouver in the semifinals, which was tons of fun. <laughs> but next week is the big day. All the hard work players and owners have put in since the season started in January get to pay off with the Simulation Football League's 14th SFL Championship, which is going to be on Sunday, April 26th at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Twitch. For anybody interested in watching the game, it'll be live streamed on FTF Next Twitch page. And you can find more about the league by checking out the website at simulationfl.net and joining our league's Discord. All right. Uh, yeah, definitely for sure. If you guys want to go check that out, I'll have all the descriptions on the YouTube channel side. Uh, there will be uh, in the description below all the information. Uh, where to go to uh actually on the on the website itself too it has the the link to the discord right i I think you said that right yep it's right in the top right corner when you load the page big discord button and uh is there any uh is you said there was also on youtube what's the youtube link for this like in case somebody somebody wants to see check this out and and see what they're like getting themselves into. so the youtube channel is going to be simulation fl and all the games, even if they're not live streamed directly on YouTube, they all get uploaded to YouTube later for archiving. Mm-hmm. So you can go back and watch just about any game in the league's history found on their YouTube page. Nice. All right. Well, 2K, thank you so much for joining me and giving out this information. Uh, as always, guys, like we, I try my best to like put out any type of information that can help out anybody. doesn't matter. Like, uh, honestly, if it helps me or not, I don't care. It's about growing all together because when they grow we grow you know what i mean but anyways thank you again dude thank you so much for for the shout out and uh all right have a good day <laughs> thank you so much for having me and i just want to say if we're still going here that um you know in, in this time where there's no sports and there's nothing to do if you want to watch some football we got football for you so stop on by <laughs> definitely for sure all right thank- all right man thank you dude What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Three Way Podcast. I am your host today, Jerks, and as always, I am joined by JD McCanny and Public Enemy Fifty Nine. No, no, hey, about you, what's up, I'm JD. Guys. You're Public Enemy. This <laughs> is right. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and start off this podcast with gaming. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Game over. Game over. So, obviously, Capcom has been in a rampage with all their remakes, and here we go again with more rumors and leaks. Resident Evil 4 is getting a remaster. A remaster or reboot? 
What, what are they saying? It's a remake. A it's a remake, remake right? It's a remake. remake. Yeah. It's a, a remake. A la RE2 right remake, RE3 remake. <clears throat> now, uh, this is coming from an article from uh, what? Uh, Games Radar. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake is coming in 2020 from a new studio, reports say. Uh, from the article, it continues, a Resident Evil 4 remake is coming from Capcom, according to reports citing insider knowledge. The reports, which have emerged on uh, VGC, uh, Gamatsu, and through the Twitter account of frequent horror game leaker Dusk Goldman, all point to Resident Evil 4 remake being on track to arrive sometime in 2022. They also indicate that work on the project has been led by M2 Studios since the developer opened in 2018, meaning it's already been in the works for a while. All right, so I'm sorry reading that. Let me get you guys' opinion. We just got RE2 remake. We just got RE3 remake. What do you think about RE4 remake? Um, I I think that uh, so it all depends to me on the developer, right? Yeah. I know it's all Capcom. RE2 was remade by an in-house studio, yeah. right? This is. Top of the not top notch. They're Resident a team. They're a team. Yeah, <laughs> Resident Evil Three not done by an A team. It was kind of a, a. It was the B team with a little bit of A. <laughs> and that was that. It, it showed a big difference in those two games. When you compare Resident Evil Two to Resident Evil Three, as you'll we'll go into details in our Hyundai show this Wednesday. Um, it's just not in the same stratosphere, right? It's not a bad game. It's just not a Resident Evil 2. So that's my thing with Resident Evil 4. This is many people's favorite Resident Evil because it was like a great mixture of action and uh, this you is know, the first time we see Resident the Evil. over the shoulder view. Yeah, third person. Correct, correct. And which is now kind of the standard for all the new games. So Resident Evil 2 4 is a it's huge for a lot of people. It's a lot of people's resi uh, favorite Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. That's why I think you have to take special care for this remake and really go all in because people are really going to expect this to surpass Resident Evil 2, which was, you know, many people's game of the year. I know it was a lot of our uh, game of the year. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, I hope they, they handle it right. I hear that it's, it is an A-team, but I'm not 100% on that. But yeah, I mean they need they need to do this the right way because uh, you know Cap Capcom hasn't done any uh, wrong. Uh, Resident Evil Three just eh. yeah. JD, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean it's like I said, it looks like I said that it's been an, it's been in the works since before Resident Evil Three came out. So I mean it's not like they haven't been not like they decided to all of a sudden throw this together. It's been in the works for a couple of years. So I think hopefully they've had enough time to take a look at what's ever, what's been going on with all the other games as well as what they're what you know whatever people were saying about Resident Evil 3 and apply a lot of that to Resident Evil 4 and hopefully, you know, put out something that, that would be worthy of the, uh, the the franchise and keep people interested in this franchise altogether. So we'll have to wait and see what comes out, but hopefully they'll, uh, like I said, again, it's, it's all about the fans. Hopefully they're going to pay attention to the fans and see what they wanted and then mm -hmm. give them exactly what they wanted. So, All right, let me tell you something. No more remakes! Stop it. Get some help. There's no original <laughs> ideas anymore. God, got damn it. Own, Stop know, it. <laughs> we're getting Resident Evil 8. Yeah, we're getting RE8 next year. Next yeah. year and it, I mean, yeah. it looks like we're going to be getting a Resident Evil like uh, year to year. So that's, that, I mean, so far, it doesn't seem like the Corona issue has affected it's them. It's a new Call of Duty. Uh, <laughs> but, okay. Uh, Resident Evil 4, I, I don't think it needs a remake. I mean, it's fine as is. I mean, again, it's where we first see the over the shoulder perspective in these uh, Resident Evil games. Uh, I played it when it originally came out. I thought it was great. Um, this game, I mean, from all indications, especially since it's going to be coming out 2022, I feel like this one is going to be more of a, uh, what can Capcom do past the current RE engine and and seeing it in the new consoles, the new generations. Because by 2022, I assume we already have PS5 and Xbox Series X. So yeah. I... Uh, I would expect this game to be more for that for those consoles. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they will have like you know the the current gen uh, versions as well. But uh, RE three didn't get to, like as high praise as RE two. But regardless, I don't think it was going to. 
only because it's like right be right uh yeah right behind uh resident evil 2's release of the re that remake i mean they pretty much didn't like they would have to do something like like kind of like big in order for it to be like oh wow this is a great game too but really it it, it, it was just another resident evil game uh, uh in the vein of re2 remake like there wasn't much of a difference other than like the protagonist who you're playing like the time but whatever we'll get into that into the review this wednesday uh so moving on from there uh cable and the x-force are coming to fortnite y'all still play fortnite <laughs> i know what i played it when it was just a uh regular story mode i didn't play it i played it didn't play it when it, when it well i mean i played a little bit when the uh you know the, the battle royal part came out. I wasn't real. I mean, I wouldn't. I thought it was a great concept. That it was great, but I'm not mm -hmm. real big on the whole battle royal situation. Just because you know I get my butt kicked every single freaking time. So yeah, like um, they they added Deadpool uh, a while ago, yeah. and then and then now they're adding the X Force, which is like the team he's a part of. Which, uh, uh huh. That really surprises me because Disney is usually on top of these kind of things as far as getting stuff out there to the cut, you know, and in the in the consumer eye and getting stuff out they can see that kind of stuff. So that them taking this long to put out something like that is really kind of surprising you know well there's there is that. also the issues even before corona about the crunch especially epic epics like their fortnite like they were getting updates like what every two weeks every every month or something like they were coming out oh, yeah. quick and like uh when the whole situation with the with the crunch uh c came into play how people weren't like were getting overworked underpaid uh or even even the pay was even if they were getting their overtime they were still t the point wasn't even the pay anymore it was just them having to work like too many hours a week uh so obviously that's going to slow down development of these type of like uh uh new updates to the games yeah. uh fortnite uh you know what I, I think i talked about this a couple of weeks ago i have seen like fortnite start to take a huge dip uh yeah. like there was even like a, a tweet from i think it was polygon or, or GameSpot. they're like hey what gamers are you playing it was like Valorant, uh, Rocket League, uh, COD, Apex, and wow. no Fortnite. No Fortnite. I was like, what? Like, is it, like, what's going on? But I guess this is their way to try to come back into the, the fold. It's like, hey, you know, we're still here. Don't forget I'm about us. I'm actually surprised about Rocket League because that, that's kind of been – I didn't think that was still – I mean, I, I still see people playing it, but I didn't think it was as big of a deal as, uh, as Fortnite, you know. Yeah, I mean, I have I have a buddy of mine, uh, Mitchie, Mitchie, He's he's been streaming and playing uh, Rocket League. I mean, honestly, I wish I was better at Rocket League, but man, is it hard to play? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, mean, I can't play that game, dude. I don't know. Are you gonna be trying this game out, uh, Los? The new update? Nah, I mean, I, I I touch Fortnite ever so often, and really, there's not enough innovation there to I think really keep an audience like it was before for too long. I mean, you have to innovate. And if you just keep the same thing year after year, there's really not going to be any interest. You have so much stuff coming out. You have Warzone, which is now free. You have uh, Apex, which is free. Uh, there's so much stuff out there that you have to constantly, like, innovate your game for people to stay interested. If you're not right. going to do that, then... Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean yeah, you know. yeah, they had to do like a huge shutdown of the game just to get people's attention again. For in my opinion, when they started, uh, what was it, uh, Chapter Two? I think that's what they were calling yeah, it. Yeah, people literally had to play something else for like two days. Because, <laughs> yeah, they just it, shut it, everything. It was down, just a so. black hole. Yeah, whenever you booted up yeah, the there, game, there's always going to be a shinier bobble out there somewhere. You know, you I mean, sure that you're, you're going to outshine them first. It, it is to be expected, dude. I mean, I remember when what Minecraft was at its peak. Like the, even even on YouTube, like a bunch of the Minecraft videos were like all you ever see. Like mm -hmm. it was ever in your feed. And then eventually, uh, Fortnite uh, overshadowed that. Um, yeah. You know, it it, it happens. It's, it's trends, but people still play it, playing it. I'm sure they're still making shit tons of money. Like, I don't oh, think yeah, they're I'm hurting. Sure they're making lots of money, yeah. <laughs> All right, and moving on to our last part here in gaming, we get the first trailer for the Dark Pictures anthology, Little Hope. Uh, the first one they actually showed. Uh, the uh, well, the first game they actually released was Man of Midian. Uh, which I was telling these guys, like, if if you were to buy it, like, one person was to buy it, you can actually play the co-op missions with a friend who hasn't bought it. Like, you'll have that kind of, kind of access to it. I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that in any other type of game. But uh, 
Supermass is back uh, with another game. Uh, it, it, all these games are pretty much like horror games. Uh, just watched the trailer. I thought it was looking cool. Uh, what are you guys thinking about this? I have not seen the trailer. You haven't seen it yet? <laughs> no. I did see the trailer. I I like it. It looks it looks really good as far as the uh, graphics and everything. You know, cutscenes are always going to be a big deal nowadays. Making sure everybody's got that. But you also want gameplay. Yeah. So hopefully the gameplay is going to live up to what the cutscenes are looking like. Um, yeah. I didn't actually get to play Dark Pictures, uh, Man of Medine, or Medan, or however you pronounce it. Um, I don't know how yeah, to pronounce it either. Like, I'm, I'm not real big into the horror game um, what? genre. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm more of an action and, and you know first-person shooter kind of guy. So, But uh, it does look kind of interesting. I think it would be kind of interesting to, to check it out just for the... Uh, yeah, this I, I want to go the try story. out. I want to go try out the first one, the Man of Medellin. Like, uh, this is this is from the same guys that made uh, what was that game called on PS4? Uh, shoot, oh my god, the game that was on PS4. Hmm. The the one that's similar to this one. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what it's called right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 hold on, Super Mass Games. It was free too as well at one point. Oh, Until Dawn. They made Until Dawn as well. Until Dawn, I did play. I thought that one was great. It, it gives you like uh, branching storylines. Uh, you get to uh, like quote unquote pick who lives and dies. It's a pretty interesting story. That's a, that, if you guys have a PlayStation, I recommend you guys check that one out. That was the one with the uh, the, the, the bunch of college guys who were up in the uh, yeah they're cabin, like in right? a cabin. That's right. Yeah, I I, I, I I didn't play it, but I like watching people play it. I thought it was really yeah. that's it. That was really interesting because again, that was the multiple choices. You know, yeah, 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 I, yeah. What's going to happen? So and you had the different endings. So again, multiple. You know, like I said the last time we were doing something like this, you know, multiple choices give you different endings, but give it more playability. People are going to want to play it more, to yeah, see absolutely. what they can get. So right. yeah, that's that's a great, that's a smart idea. And if yeah, if they can do that with this one too, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how their games are. Uh, I don't know for sure. Like I said, I haven't played the first one yet of Madame Yin, Medellin, but. Uh, I think they're connected, like worldly connected and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like if you play one, you kind of get into the other one type of situation. He, he I think. I know in, in the I trailer he mentions it. He yeah. Mentions you oh, okay. Medan, so okay. I think, so, it, I yeah. think it's gonna be it's it's part of that whole series. And I also like too that they actually use like real actors for these type of games. So I yeah, I recognize that. Good yeah, too. I recognize like both of these guys. Even in the first one, it was uh, uh, that girl from uh Heroes. Uh, what's her name? Uh, shoot. Hayden Panettieri. Hayden Panettieri's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So, oh no, you know who else they had on that one? They had a. Uh, oh my God, I'm, I'm blanking on these names right now. Uh, Rami. Yeah, Rami Malik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. Like the actors to get for these games. I'm uh, definitely gonna check it out. Definitely got to replay. Uh, got to play for the first time. Madame Uh But yeah, uh, that's exciting news. I am moving on. That's closing out gaming. Let's go into uh, sports question mark. Remember, gotta keep it quiet because all the all the stadiums are empty right now. So, bad, bad. Give me six feet. All right. <sighs> all right. Well, the NBA has started to cut their pay. Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna let Los take over from here because I don't know what's going on in the basketball. Woo! Yeah. So uh, with the <laughs> postponement of. Uh, of the NBA uh, season, uh, the ownerships have decided to cut the pay of NBA players going forward on their, I think those guys are getting paid weekly. So on their weekly checks, those guys are, are getting a, uh, a, a pay cut. cut. Now, J.D., you said that was 25%? Yeah, so they're looking between 23 and 26% was the average, what they were saying. Holy moly. I yeah, mean... so... I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I really have no feelings toward this. I, I don't know the financials of the NBA. How much are these uh, owners losing? What I do care most are the other employees of the organization. That some it, It's been organization by organization. Some organizations have come out and say, for example, the Dallas Mavericks and Mark Cuban have come out and said, we're going to keep paying our employees, right? Some other organizations have been squeaky quiet about that and uh, we're not sure if they're going to be paying their employees you got some players stepping up and paying the employees themselves and yeah. uh, it's just kind of all over the place i mean play the the basketball player's salary is kind of like least of my concern but uh 
I'm more, uh, uh, you know, thinking about the other employees that aren't making, you know, millions per per year. So I don't know. That is my way of looking at it. Uh, from this uh, heavy.com, I've never heard of this, but it was just I was just looking it up for the information of the average like NBA player salary. Uh, it says here the minimum NBA uh, salary. Uh, i.e. The, the least amount of money a player can be paid ranges from $838,000 to $2.3 million. Uh, the, minimum, the minimum amount of money a player can make depends on his experience. A rookie minimum salary is $838, uh, I mean $838,000, while a veteran with 10 or more years of experience can make no less than $2.3 million. Holy shit. So, I mean... Yes, in a way, I, I I do think they will be hurting with the pay cut because, I mean, once you start getting paid like this, you obviously, like, step up, like, where you live, the, your expenses, uh, the people around you, like, your family, like, you start taking care of family members who, are, who aren't as, like, uh, uh, you know, financially you know, viable of, you know, great levels of money right now as you are. So, like, I, I, I will, I like, I do see, like, how some players are, like, okay with... Like, hey, I'm going to help out this guy that works at the arena that I play basketball in. Uh, and mm-hmm. then there's another one where it's like, look, I would want to help you, but I also, like, need to help out other people, too. But then again, you know, that's me being optimistic about it. There's always the uh, the, the, the person who's just like, nah, fuck that. I'm not going to help you. <laughs> Go make your own damn money. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, this whole situation, too, is still... I mean, literally, it's still in limbo, even though they keep giving us, like, oh, just one, uh, another month, we'll see how it goes next month, uh, another month, we'll see how it goes next month. Like, we really don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know, like, what are the long-lasting repercussions of this situation in terms of, like, uh, sporting events, uh, concerts, uh, any type of group gatherings, like, conventions. So, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this pay cut doesn't hurt anybody too bad hopefully they that also means that maybe they're going to spend some of that money with the people that were actually working in the arenas like you said well the purpose of the pay cut is actually to keep from having to charge the players money for games not played um oh that's but, so, but that's some, not all it's, that, con- it's, it's some part of their contract is i don't know i have to fully read it so oh, the, the, the nba players you. association needs to get on that then that's i mean that's out of their control yeah but it, well that's, no that's actually, the reason they're the doing that cut- was negotiated between the players association okay, yeah. and the so they came to this agreement together uh you know so yeah that that's kind of like it was a kind of like a mutual thing mm-hmm. and uh yeah i mean you know it's a tough situation uh but like i said i mean all those people working uh those lower paying jobs hopefully they're getting taken care of yeah, yeah, I, it's all described in the, in the article. I think if we could post a link to the article, they, they see it. But it's like something with escrow and with the players' escrow and stuff like that. It's just it's some if they right now they could uh, the players could risk up to about three hundred eighty million dollars uh, being returned back to the teams with all everything that's going on. So I think they're trying to prevent that from happening. Is why this whole pay cut's going on. So. Oh, that's right. All right. All right, well, that's going to be it for sports because there isn't much going on. No. <laughs> uh, moving on. Pop culture. Pop. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen. The Tiger King is still in jail. But Netflix did release another episode of the Tiger King uh, documentary series, which like swept the nation. JD's favorite like, doc nowadays. It's like uh, Sharnado, Sharknado. It just won't freaking die. <laughs> Tiger King and I. Uh, basically, Tiger King and I was uh, also debuted. Uh, it's like the eighth episode. Uh, it, you know what? This... this episode it was hosted by joe McHale. i watched it and it was basically him interviewing people from his from his literally from his couch and it's so funny too because you know netflix sent everybody uh airpods he they sent everybody like the phones i, I believe i want to say and like they everybody had the airpods on my girlfriend i'm like why does everybody have airpods i'm like Air netflix <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah like uh, he, he basically interviewed uh he interviewed oh my gosh it was like a where are they now kind of like interview uh, session, kind of like how we're doing here, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like he he interviewed uh, his uh, Joe Exotic's uh, ex-husband, John Finley. Uh, he interviewed the the guy that got his arm <laughs> bit off by the tiger. 
he interviewed like uh, several of the of the people that were in the documentary and uh, literally like the only thing i got from this is that everybody's happy that he's in jail <laughs> like no mm-hmm. one was on his side like everybody was just talking shit to him uh downplaying him even even the 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 dude that got his arm bit off like it, it, in the series he was like really like with joe but in this one he was all like he's like yeah you know joke you like they they he did the thing with with the thanksgiving dinner where he was always cooking it uh and giving it out for free on thanksgiving if you had nowhere else to go um and like they he, he tried to like humanize him but at the same time he was like nah he needs to be in jail <laughs> damn yeah i mean it wasn't like too riveting like he, he joe michael just interviewed these guys uh one by one and it, it's pretty much what you would expect like like they don't want Joe. They don't. They don't want to do anything with Joe. Joe put himself in his own like cage. Uh, there's nothing like basically. You really don't learn much. Uh, but that. Oh my gosh, I can't. I can't remember his name. But the guy that doesn't have legs, but he has like the the cool looking like prosthetics. Like that dude is so entertaining. Watch, dude. Like when he was talking about everything, I was like, oh my god, I just want to see this guy. Like in his own show, like I thought he was pretty cool, but anyways. Yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if we brought this up, but Trump uh, was asked if uh, he had seen Tiger King and uh, <laughs> what? I didn't know that. Yeah, he was in the press conference. He was asked if he's seen Tiger King and if he's considered uh, uh, pardoning <laughs> yeah. a Joe Exotic. And uh, Trump was like, he's just like, no, uh, I, you know, I haven't taken a look at it. Um, you know, and then he he asked the reporter, "Do you think he's uh he's guilt? I mean, he's innocent." And the reporter obviously was like, "Well, I can't really answer that. I have to be partisan." And then, like Trump was like, "Well, I haven't taken a look at it. I'll take a look at it." But basically, in the end, uh, Joe Exotic's gonna get pardoned. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't think he's ever gonna come out, bro. Like I doubt Trump would pardon him, but. I, I, that would be badass if he pardoned him. Oh no! Not that I think Joe Exotic is a great human being by any means, but mm-hmm. I think that would be pretty entertaining. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, here we go. You better be crossing his his fingers in jail. Uh, yep. Moving on, GDQ Games Done Quick is hosting a speed or running marathon for coronavirus relief. Now, I put this on here myself because I really do like GDQ. I think GDQ is a great organization. And I mean, I like watching games being done quick. Uh, that's what she said. And uh, well, yes, <laughs> the event runs through April 19th. This is from Polygon. Uh, games done quick. The organization, the organization behind many popular speed running charity events, is hosting a special stream for COVID-19 relief. The event is called Cor- Corona Relief Done Quick, and it will start at 12 p.m. Eastern on Friday, April 17th. Oh shit, this is already live. Uh, <laughs> while most of the games done quick event are hosted in person. Corona Relief Done Quick will be hosted online to help prevent the spread of the virus. Like the organization's normal events, there will be speed runs of a variety of games ranging from classics to release cl- classics to releases from the last several years. During each segment, the speedrunner and a host will take over the stream, explaining what they're doing and reading out the donations that come in from viewers. You can find the full schedule at the event speedrunning. Anyways, just go to Twitch, Games Done Quick, and you'll see it right there. I mean, this is, uh, honestly, we usually do end up talking about GDQ, and honestly, their their organization like year after year you know prior to this year of course was always like topping themselves when it comes to all the charitable funds they're getting they're receiving to uh help prevent cancer uh you know whatever whatever like relief they had like set up to to like to try to get rid of basically and i love watching this this organization Please, if you can, go check them out. Games Done Quick, uh, twitch.tv forward slash games done quick. Go check them out. They also have the replays on YouTube if you guys just want to watch some games done really quick. Uh, like right now, they're, they're doing Super Mario Sunshine. Like, it's it, That's a great game, too. If you've never played it, go watch it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on from that and to our last segment. CDCC, San Diego Comic Con. I think it's SDCC, but just, you know. SD, CC. Whatever, man. I don't know shit. I've been reading too long. San Diego Comic Con 
has been canceled. The l- running for 50 years. In its 50 years, not mm-hmm. once was it ever canceled. Now, it's gone. Uh, sorry, nerds. Uh, next event will take place July 2021, according to this The Verge. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, one of the biggest world, uh, biggest comic book conventions, is officially canceled. The convention will instead run next year from July 22nd to. Ju- oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, July 22nd to July 25th, 2021. Uh, let me stop right there and ask you guys: Have you guys ever wanted to go, uh, like San Diego Comic Con? Like, I know it's one of the biggest ones. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind going, but then again, I'm not that much of a nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a freaking nerd. And I've always uh, wanted to go to San Diego Comic Con. Uh, unfortunately, that's gonna have to wait another year at minimum. Uh, but I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, keep these crowd that that play that convention gets crowded big time so mm-hmm. uh yeah you want to avoid things like that and uh yeah i mean uh, it's, it's the right thing to do yeah and it, it is it's a smart thing to cut it down because you always hear about the conventions being you know people come back from conventions be coming out with some kind of you know flu bug or something like that oh, and yeah, this that would definitely me. be a hot spot for that kind of thing to, to progress so it's actually a good thing to kind of get on i also like the fact that they're not they're offering refunds but they're also offering the option of carrying what you paid over to next year so you're oh, not, really? you don't have to sit there. Yeah, so you don't have to try and try and you had tickets, but you know you're going to go next year. Okay, fine. We'll just carry it over to next year, and you can just do that rather than in lieu of getting repaid. So if you want to do that option as well, that's a smart way to do it because it'll guarantee sales for next year. You know. Yeah, because uh, I, I I do I do remember signing up for their uh, to buy tickets just to have one, just like to see if I'll be able to get one. Uh, they have these long queues. You have to wait for these yeah. emails. Like this is one of the most popular like conventions there is, like literally in the world. Uh, but yeah, it, it's the right thing to do. Uh, this, to, it, th- like I said, one of the biggest conventions there is. You, obviously, you're gonna get people from all over the country, uh, all over the world. This is the best f- for the situation that we have right now. It's unfortunate, and yeah. honestly. At this point, I mean, I was holding out for TwitchCon that it wouldn't be canceled, but at this point, I think everything's going to be canceled this year. Like, well, I don't think I don't think we're getting anything this year. We'll see how it goes. I mean, toward, I mean, I think yeah, it's it's smart just because that kind of an event does take a lot of planning and a lot of preparation. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, you know, but by this particular time frame, I'm pretty sure they have no idea when it's going to happen again. TwitchCon, on the other hand. We still got a couple. We got a, got a few months before that. Yeah, TwitchCon is so. in September, towards the yeah, end of September. So. But the thing is, is like. Like I said earlier, like there's a lot of there's this 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 situation with COVID nineteen. Um, we don't know how long it's gonna be. Right now, we're literally going month to month, saying, okay, one more month in quarantine, another month in quarantine. Uh, experts at who and what and et cetera are saying that this is gonna be longer than a couple of months. This is gonna be like a year, like maybe even longer. So at this point, I I would assume everything's getting canceled for this year. At I, I, I'm assuming like we're not going to do anything this year in terms of like group gatherings. Uh, like I said, this right. is going to be, this is a unprecedented event. So uh, at this point I'm, I'm just waiting for all the cancellations for the rest of the year. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. So, all right guys, that's going to be it for our podcast today, but as always, uh, Los is, well, what is it called? The last final rights of the punch. The final punch. Final punch. <laughs> Final punch. What's your final punches, guys? <laughs> uh, my final punch is uh, supposedly we're supposed to be opening up uh, businesses, everything starting next week. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't stepping foot about out of my place. Y'all can go ahead and I like a meme I've seen. Y'all can be the first test. We can see how it is. I'll, I'll take y'all, I'll, you know, I'll see how it is after that and maybe follow y'all outside. But for the meantime, I'm going to stay my ass inside. Thank you. <laughs> JD. Yeah, on that note, everybody just stay home, stay safe. You know, just give it a chance to, to freaking uh, finish up so we can get this coronavirus out of the way. So we can get all the thing back, back to running normal again. And hopefully they'll find a, figure out a cure for it soon and we can get this back up and uh, oh, man. To, yeah. back, at, least, at least get back to a somewhat semblance of normalcy. Facts. Uh, my funnel punch is, well, I, some shit happened in the Discord channel and I didn't like it. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard yeah, about that. I didn't see it, but, but I heard about it, yeah. But I guess my funnel punch is not like like talking like 
down to this person or persons that did it but saying i feel bad for them and like i try to help but you know there's only so much you can, one person can do to help somebody who doesn't want yeah. any help so papa bless so what you can do to help a racist uh yeah like you know pray for them hopefully you know they'll change their ways but you know some people just never do yeah unfortunately um, races or, are racist yeah uh, <laughs> uh oh all right uh well that's gonna be it for us today thank you so much for everybody who's watching on the YouTubes, listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, uh, thanks to Anchor letting us go to any other podcasting platform for free. And of course, you guys can stay connected with us. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, and the best way to communicate with us literally is on the YouTube channel. Leave a leave a comment. We actually do go through them. We talk right back to you, especially if you're talking noise. I'll let, I'll let JP handle that situation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right guys all right thank you guys right. for for listening and uh have a good day wash your hands peace Take care